Well, good evening everybody. Jay Kalotic again. Time for an update on the 1350th Polar Lights Classic Enterprise Kit. What you see in front of you is the shuttle bay assembly. The, uh, the clear one that comes in the lighting kit in combination with a couple of parts that come in the stock kit, specifically the hangar bay doors and the shuttle bay floor, just like what you saw in the previous video. As you can see, I've got this wired up with the uh, with the lights from the two strings. Let me plug it in here so you can see kind of what it looks like when it's lit up. Okay. Four LEDs right here, two more on top, plus the, uh, the, uh, the hangar control bay light on top. There's also one underneath which uh, will light the fan tail, which is another clear piece that the kit provides. Now, in terms of mounting the lights, it wasn't really that difficult. Um, to secure the top lights, I used uh, Micro Crystal Clear, which is that white glue mixture that I mentioned before. And it does look like uh, Round 2 designed these these uh, little overhangs on either side of the uh, the skylight window looks like they designed them to be deep enough uh, for these lights and their wiring harnesses to fit in rather nice I did notice though that the that the center wire that does have to go into the uh, little control bay back here that one did require a little bit of grinding and you got to be very careful to do that with clear parts because clear parts being more brittle than standard styrene means that if you're not careful you could end up shattering a whole sub-assembly. What I did to open up the trench was I uh, used my cordless Dremel Moto Tool with an engraving bit uh, the engraving bit that I've got is the largest one uh, that Dremel makes for this. And pretty much all I did was I gradually wore away a little bit of plastic at a time until I was able to get this wiring harness to drop in a little deeper, especially right here where it transitions into this clear piece. Um, Plus, you've got to remove, remove a fair amount of material uh, from this little piece as well. And again, one has to be very careful to do that in order to get this, uh, this flat rectangular LED to drop in. Now, if you notice, I've also rounded the edges of this LED. Thankfully, since it's mostly a plastic housing, it is possible to sand and remove material, provided you're not touching the cathode I believe it is. It's been a long time since I've taken basic elect electronics to know exactly what is inside a light emitting diode. But uh, I sanded it down, I rounded it so it would uh, conform to the shape a little better. Um, I did remove all the material out of the inside of this piece again using the engraving tip because if I had tried going at it with a knife chances are I would probably would have busted this piece completely in half. Um, HDA ran into that problem and he was having to uh, utilize the gray piece and grind material out of that just to uh, get it to work with the hangar bay. Now, you have to be careful when you're doing that because, I don't know how well you can see it, because the bottom of that piece also has a ceiling and if you remove all that material you're going to have a big time light leak going into the top of the hangar bay. Um, so what I had to do was I had to use a uh, piece of standard uh, styrene to make a floor, slash, a, a floor slash ceiling piece, glue it in there, conform it, and then uh, spray paint it silver to uh, take care of the light leak there. It worked. Now the uh, the hangar bay doors, okay, this piece up here plus the hangar bay doors, I did spray paint in silver to uh, plug light leaks. There is a little piece of tape right there covering over 
where that area is going to be white on the completed model. That will get pulled off after all the paint work is done. Um, for the shuttle bay to plug light leaks there, I also spray painted the inside of the shuttle bay doors silver. And then after I checked it with uh, my flashlight to make sure that there were no light leaks, I then covered it over with a, with a light gray shade to cover over the silver. And it did a pretty good job. I don't know how well you can see in there. You can kind of see the shuttlecraft. Looks pretty nice in my opinion. Here you can see a uh, completed one half of the uh, secondary hull inner assembly with the uh, the wiring harnesses installed for the lights. One's one light set is going back to these little blinkies back here, uh, which correspond to the, I guess they call them ion pods on the outside of the uh, of the secondary hull. Uh, windows are installed. I've got my silver painted for light blocking purposes. I've also got the strip LEDs installed. And if you remember from uh, a couple other parts of my video. You know, so there's some little brown applications of uh, of the Walther's goo in order to secure the wiring harnesses. And I must say, it it does a really good job right here, especially in some of these areas where I really have to coil these wires. Because they are a little long, and something's got to be done to secure them so they don't just go flopping loose. But uh, everything installed rather nicely. Um... I've also got some silver painted in some areas on the clear windows, areas where light's not passing through to get to a window on the outside, in order to uh, help plug some of the light leaks and also to reflect the light a little better. For instance, right here is uh, is one of the smoke tinted window pieces, and I just painted that entirely black first, and then painted it in silver. To help cast light a little better. Um, silver does seem to be doing the job just fine for my interior. However, when I was doing my light tests on the shuttle bay, it did seem a little faint. So I did paint a portion of the of the inside of the secondary hull that corresponds to the shuttle bay. I did paint it white in color. Uh, just with some uh, spray lacquer white uh, in order to see if that would uh, give me a little bit better light glow effect on the inside of the shuttle bay and it does seem to work. Um, thankfully the shuttle bay does seem to be a little on the dark side uh, in the episodes but either remastered or regular Trek uh, depending, depending on what generation of footage you're watching so it does seem to work, but I do have to admit, it is a little tough getting all those, especially that skylight, getting it to light properly without without looking too dim. And plus also trying to obscure the fact that there's a big wiring harness going right down the center of that skylight. Thankfully I've frosted the clear glass up in that section enough to, uh, shouldn't be able to see it. Plus also the hangar door is kind of obscure just how much of an angle I can look in to see what's in there. Uh, I did do I did do some uh, test fitting of the uh, warp nacelle pylons into the uh, into the secondary hull, and I got to tell you, Polar Lights did a really good job engineering these pieces. They fit very very snug. There's very little play in that assembly, and assuming the uh, the cor these corresponding parts fit into the uh, warp nacelles just as snug, I don't think there's going to be any problems aligning these warp nacelles at all. A uh, little bit of tweaking might be needed, but uh, down here it's not really a problem. I did uh, glue these these nacelle pylons using the recommended technique from uh, from round two polar lights which was to use plastic weld glue and a and uh, tube glue something slower acting in order to uh, 
make sure that the that the remaining assembly was nice and rock hard and well did the job rather nicely there's almost no yeah looks like everything will fit just fine and I'm just doing mine like the uh, the studio model where there was no lights going up into these pylons so all these little windows are black which is nice I mean I know HDA is trying to light his and if he if if he can get his to work it's gonna look really really good but for me <laughs> I decided to quit when I was a uh, quit when I was behind and just uh, go for a duplicated appearance ain't that cool Very nice. Liking what I'm seeing. The black lights that should be black are staying black. The glowing lights are glowing. A couple of minor, minor light leaks, but uh, the silver took care of the er, care of the majority of it. So, like the saucer, I should not have any trouble. Uh, plugging what little light leaks there are. Let's take it around to the shuttle bay here. Of course I can't really, I'm not gonna even try to shoot inside to show what that looks like. Uh, when the model's completely done I'll shoot a picture of the interior and I'll probably also try shooting a couple of pictures of work in progress shots just to show you what that looks like. But um, things do fit reasonably well. It is a little tough getting this uh, top spine section to close with everything in there, but I think I can gap it just enough to uh, to do what I need to do um, if, I'm, if I'm careful. Uh, one thing I will note that the little three viewports or whatever that are on the spine here those are probably going to have to stay dark simply because there's a wiring harness that's going directly underneath them. So there's not really going to be any way to get any spill light in there. Uh, the lower LED for the bottom of the fan tail, it's showing through really nice, especially after I put a little, uh, put some silver paint there. Uh, so it should uh, cast light on those. Uh, approach marker is very nice. Uh, the upper the upper LED, this rectangular one, I was a little concerned with uh, how well that would fit, but it looks like the sanding I did got it to slot in there just about right. Uh, once I've got this assembled there's going to be a photo etch piece that's going to go underneath that will kind of act as a light blocker and followed by the dome and well that should be it. And if you look close, it does look like there is enough of a spill light coming through the shuttle bay to uh, light these back markers. Maybe not as much as it could be, but then again, once I've got everything glued together, I think it'll look I think it'll look just fine. Other side looks pretty good too. Well, let me try setting down. Yeah, I don't know how much of that can be seen. But I am making progress. Oh, by the way, one thing I will also point out uh, when you've got these circuit boards exposed like this, I mean, the way this particular kit is designed, the secondary hull circuit board slots into some little slots right at the front. But be aware when you're doing light tests like this, be very careful not to short across any of those terminals. So make sure you've got no metal tools like say a file or an exacto knife with a with a with a metal body. Make sure you don't have those anywhere near the circuit board. Uh, there were a couple of times when I did touch across a couple of these 
little ports and I went, oh crap, I don't want a repeat of what happened to my one of my Bussard collectors, but thankfully it didn't look it look, doesn't look like it shorted anything. But as I said before, with uh solid state timing circuits or anything involving like those little light timers on the uh, Bussard collectors. Be very doggone careful because if you get a short anywhere and if that circuit sees more than five volts you could blow that circuit and then you'll have a totally useless board. In terms of how well the uh, the shuttle bay fits uh, with the wiring harnesses and stuff I didn't really encounter any major problems I mean as, as I said using using my uh, Dremel Moto tool to uh, carve out that center trench for the wiring harness did help a little to get the the wiring harness for this uh, center lead to drop into the hole in, into the slot a little better uh, plus I also filed on that heat shrink tubing just a little bit because it, it 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 does make the wires a little thicker going back into this uh, fan tail area as for the sides of the shuttle bay, um, the ion pods, I mean, a couple other people have mentioned that uh, the, the, the stems for the ion pods that the flashing LEDs fit into do seem to be a little long, so I went ahead and sanded those down by about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little longer, and as a result there's two little recesses on the floor of the shuttle bay. Uh, as a result, the little stems didn't seem to cause any interference, so I think I've fixed that area pretty well. I didn't have, except for this uh, upper lead right here, I didn't have to do any sanding of any of the uh, of the other leads. And as far as gluing those LEDs in, it was just a combination of uh, uh, Micro Crystal Clear, and in a couple of spots I use some of the Walther's goo which uh, came in really handy and getting all the all that wire to fit in there right behind these uh, warp pylon bulkheads took a little bit of coaxing but it looks like I got everything to fit I'm gonna play around with the sequence a little to see if I can improve that a little bit but uh, that's where I'm at with the model right now and I really like how things are progressing. Hopefully, next time you'll you uh, next time I shoot a video, I should have the uh, warp engine motors and the uh, the LEDs installed into the Bassard collectors, and I've got to get those done first and get the uh, at least get the pylons installed here before I close up the secondary hull, and I also got to make sure depending on how I build the sequence that I have a couple of uh, exposed wires that I can use to hook up the uh, Bassard collectors and the engines to. So there's a little bit more work to go before I get everything all buttoned up, but uh, I am making very good progress. I'm really liking how this model is turning out. But I'm probably over 50% of the way done with construction. Uh, of course, once everything's buttoned up in, in the sub-assemblies, then the, then the real fun starts, the painting. And, well, stick around for that. There's, that's going to be a really, that's going to be really fun to do. And I think you'll like the results with what I've got planned. In any event, until next time, thank you for checking out this video, and uh, thank you for watching.